Friday evening, my wife says, I think you need to be admitted. I said, I think so too. So by the time it was getting to, what, about 9 p.m., we said, let's try and get an ambulance. So mm -hmm. we got an ambulance. We, uh, we called, I called a friend of mine who works at Red Cross and she, to try and help us get one. Red Cross, um, I think at the time, the ambulances were all engaged. So they, she got from a different um, provider who came and then now calling insurance. And I just must say, there's a lady called Mary Mule. She's um, head of um, the customer experience at Jubilee Insurance. She's a godsend. She helped us so much. Um, at that time, you, you, you don't think about formality. So she helped us even just secure a bed at the hospital. Ambulance came, they came, took me to hospital. Um, first of all, we had an oximeter in the house. So I kept taking my oxygen. It kept saying about 96, 97. Uh, but I remember the time it had fallen, so I put it back together. So and it was working, so I didn't think much of it. But I was struggling to even speak. So my wife really helped a lot. She was such a star. I mean, she has a gift. I think I know it's a woman's thing of sort of putting mm -hmm. her illness aside and now attend to me. So she did all those calls um, when it comes to the ambulance, talking with insurance, that's Mary ETC. I eventually was put into the, into the ambulance. And when they checked my oxygen with their oximeter, it, it was reading 56. Wow. So they immediately put me on oxygen um, and rushed me to hospital. So I was not allowed to be off oxygen. So I get to hospital, they bring a wheelchair to pick me up and there's a small oxygen tank, which is on a trolley. So my supplies moved from the ambulance straight to the one which is on the trolley, which is going to be uh, wheeled next to the wheelchair I'm on and I was taken straight to HDU. By the time I was getting there, if I remember right, I was, my, my oxygen was at around um, late 70s, early 80s, so I was improving. I remained on oxygen. No, from, the, from the small tank, I was now connected to the one at my bed in the mm -hmm. HDU. So from then, my identity became HDU9. <laughs> um, and it was a good thing at the time, this was early July, that there were the, the bed there were many beds to are empty at the time so i was actually saying it's actually a good thing to have empty beds because we've reported so many times that we are running out of yes. uh, bed space in the hospitals name it so i was there for eight days i actually thought it was nine but it's eight um improving at some point i was i needed more oxygen uh, supplementary oxygen because initially i was on 2.5 liters then I, I started needing more oxygen supplementary uh, support. So I moved to three liters, eventually four liters. So the doctor said that they need to make some intervention because it seemed I was relying more on supplementary oxygen than what I was doing myself. And so I was put on, uh, so I, I, I was put on rem remdesivir, something which I'd only re remembered reporting about, but yeah. it's one that I had to sign approval for. Mm -hmm. And when they did a CT scan on me, actually, on I think the first night, um, the results came and showed that my lungs were affected 66%. So I was oh. basically operating on a third of my lungs. Wow, um, wow, wow, wow. Let's stop at that point yes. and try and understand that from the scientific point of view here, Dr.